Hello YouTube, this is Matt Pullen. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm on ICC right now. And one of the uh, one of the reasons I don't really like playing the live blitz games is uh, because I can't uh, you know I can't talk about the game and play fast. You know, like uh, you know, like some people can. So so I end up you know having to play weaker opponents to make up for it, and I think that takes away from you know quality of the games. I mean, I, I try and make the presentations worthwhile anyway, but I figured, you know, let's try a different approach. Uh, I'm going to play a longer game, and, you know, it's, it might be a longer video, but, uh, you know, I, I think the quality will be better, and I'll be able to play someone more, you know, my, you know closer to my own strength. So I'm going to seek a 15-minute pool game on ICC. I have been paired, and, uh, the game will start soon, so I'm, I'm dialed in. I'm ready to spend up to half an hour. I hope it won't take half an hour, though. Because, all right, I'm playing Richard Jones. And he plays E4, plays C5, Sicilian. All right, um, his 15-minute uh, rating is 1996. My 15-minute rating is 2078, although that's only based on one game, so you can't take that too seriously. All right, it's taking a little bit to come up with his second move here. Let's see, what do we know about this Richard Jones? All right, his best 15-minute rating is 2200. His best 5-minute rating is uh, 2100. Hmm. His 1-minute is only 1500, and his 3-minute is 1700. So I'll play D6 here. I usually play the pawn to e6 on move 2 in the Sicilian, but I'm going to try and play a Nidorf if he allows me to do so. If he allows me to do so, that is. So, um, I'm, fair, you know, I'm fairly new to the d6 uh, Sicilians. I mean, I, I played them like years and years ago, but I'm trying to get into like more... I, I'm trying to like switch up my openings. So I hope he doesn't hit me with like some funky anti-Sicilian I've never seen. You know, e one of the benefits of E6 on move 2 is it takes away a lot of the anti-Sicilians. Like you can't play the uh, the Moscow variation. Um, the, uh, you know, if he wants to play the, well, alright, so we're going into an open Sicilian. Knight F6 is important. I want to force him to play Knight C3. And I'll play A6. Keeps pieces off of E5. All right, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to do against. Uh, let's see, Bishop C4. Some things called the Sozin attack. Um, E6 seems logical. Blunting the diagonal that the bishop is just occupied. I think maybe at one some point I want to play B5 to attack that. Queen C7 is not really in the position because the bishop just drops back, and I don't have to worry about knight D5 moves. So I think uh, I think I'll play E6 here. That seems like the most logical response to bishop c4. So I'm not, I'm not like the best in uh, Nidorf theory. So hopefully if I go wrong, I'll be able to. All right, he plays bishop b3. He's avoiding me gaining a tempo by playing b5. So it's better smart. So bishop b7 is a move, knight, d, knight uh, d7 is a move. What are his ideas here? Bishop g5, f4. See, I know sometimes I might get the knight to c5. If I play b5 in this position, um, I don't know, he might play a4 or something. Anyway, I want to get some pieces out. Um, maybe I can get, get the bishop on... Uh, do I want to get the bishop on b7 or do I want to get the bishop on d7? If I play with bishop e7, bishop d7, he'll probably play, you know, F4, Queen F3, that kind of deal. I'll just play, uh, I'll just play Bishop E7. That makes sense. Of course, now if I ever put a knight on D7, I have to worry about the sensitivity on my E6 square. So G4, um, his point is obvious. He wants to play uh, g5 and make me drop my knight back to d7. So you want to play like knight c6 here? Or 
I, I want to be conscious of like if he drives my knight to d7, you know, he might try and sacrifice something. But hey, you know, you got to deal with sacrifice to you know, play the black side of the open Sicilian. So um, h6 here to delay his uh, push. Let's see. Yeah, sure. Why not? Why not? So uh, maybe here, maybe here I want to be playing b5, bishop b7. There. Hmm. I always have to be concerned about the sacrifice on e6. Alright, so he wants to play, uh, he wants to play g5, I guess. He has rook on that g5. So knight c6 appeals to me because it's, you know, trading off the knight on d4, which might, uh, and trade off the knight on d4, then it's, you know, taking the attacker away from the e6 square, so. Although in the knight orf, I know usually the knight goes to d7 and c5, or e5. Knight, knight to c5, actually, would appeal because it protects e6 and also. So, let's, let's consider knight d7 here. Knight d7, um, let's see. Is he going to take on e6? He plays bishop takes e6, and I take knight takes, and then uh, I got to move my queen somewhere, and he, he plays knight takes uh, g7 check, king f7, knight f5. All right, that, that looks pretty dangerous for me actually. Knight d, so knight e7, uh, bishop takes, and pawn takes knight takes e6. And my queen moves somewhere like a5, and they place knight takes g7 check, followed by knight f5. And then h6 is weak. Um, my king's in the center, and he's got like, I don't know, three pawns. Okay, so that's that's not appealing. So I guess my other option is knight c6 to exchange that knight that's threatening to, you know, mess me up. So let's just play knight c6 here. I'm trying to reason my way through one of the, you know, most theoretical openings in chess. Knight or Sicilian, so it's probably all right. So now, if I take on uh, d4, bishop takes, and then maybe e5. Takes bishop, takes e5, and then I'm hitting the g4 pawn. Oh, he's guarding it twice, but you know it would be uh, two pieces for rook and pawn. Ah, but then his bishop on b3 looks at my weak uh, light squares. Then I'm thinking like knight takes, bishop takes e5, and although I can take on g4, you know his bishop on b3 is very strong. So maybe, maybe I just want to play like. Uh, Knight takes, bishop takes, and bishop d7. Or I guess you can play like b5 after all those moves. b5, b4. But anyway, this piece, this piece has to go. So e5, probably not a good move. It weakens my uh, light squares. So I'm thinking b5 for bishop d7. See, can I play e5 and then just not not take on g4? Oh, that, that's probably weak. And because I played h6, I don't want to play bishop e6, you know, because he'll exchange and I'll have weaknesses like on g6. Hmm. I play a queen a5 to discourage him from playing pawn to g5, and then he'll probably just push up his h pawn. So I'm playing a b5, a queen a5, or bishop d7. Queen 
queen e5, and I might also play queen d2. I could play, play a little bit queen g5 there. Also, I need to worry about and play like knight a4, knight b6, you know, because I have a weak, potentially weak square on b6. Of course, I can play. I can just play rook b8. So, so queen a5, maybe. I wonder if that's ever been played. So he could play g5. No, well, not in this position. Um, hmm. Queen d2, I think, is his most likely try. I'm not really threatening to take on. Uh, All right. Hmm. Queen f3. So he clearly wants to castle queen side. I can play queen g5, but then he plays bishop e3. I go back to queen e5, and he plays bishop f4. I don't want my queen bouncing around like that. So that was a good move by him, queen f3. C. Is pawn to d5 good? Is pawn to e5 good? I don't know, b b5 now interferes with my queen on the fifth rank, so that doesn't appeal to me anymore. Probably just bishop. Uh, and I can't really ever play knight d7 because my g7 pawn is hanging. I can play rook g8 to prepare knight d7 to knight e5. That makes sense, actually. So, rook g8 with the idea of knight d7 and knight e5. Sure. Okay, I can't ever play b5 also because uh, he puts a pawn on e5 and his queen is attacking my loose rook on a8. So he has 12 minutes now, and I have like 650. All right, so here he put the pawn on h4, which, uh, you know, after I drop my uh, knight back to d7, my bishop will be attacking. So dropping the knight back to d7, I don't see anything dangerous for him. And you know, continuing to e5. I can play pawn to h5 here. No, he probably just takes it. All right, I'll, I'll continue with my idea. If he plays g5, I think I, I play h takes, and if h takes, then knight, to g, knight e5. He's blocked, he's, uh, he's blocked his own f-pawn, so that's why I want to put a piece on e5. Force him to waste time getting this f-pawn free. Then I can play, uh, like, I don't know, b5 with the idea of knight coming to c4. All right, so here, I don't want him to open the G file, so i have got to take this off. All right, bishop takes G5. That is now an option. Can I get away with this? I don't like it, because there seems to be a variety of ways he can cut off my, uh, cut off my queen from supporting the bishop on G5. So I don't think this is a sound pawn grab. So I'll probably just continue with my uh, knight e5. Knight e5 takes, and then you can play pawn to g6. I don't know, that, that doesn't seem too threatening. So I'll continue with the knight to e5. And then my next moves are probably going to be, well, if the queen's on the f file, I can't. Uh, I have to be conscious of my f7 pawn. So queen to e2. He frees up his f pawn. All right. Here's an idea. Bishop takes g5 now. And then if he plays uh, rook takes, I can play knight f3 check and pick up his rook. Bishop takes g5. If he takes on e5, 
You can take with queen. That looks good for me. Oh wait, then he has queen h5. And there's no way... Oh wait, then I just dropped back bishop f6. Alright, bishop takes g5. It's certainly a move I'm looking at in the position. Bishop takes g5. Knight f4. No, not really. I just chopped that. Alright. Let's see how he's going to refute this. If he takes, then I play queen, uh, knight to f3 check, and then queen takes g5. Oh, maybe you can just um, take knight f3 check, queen takes rook, and then, like, bishop a4 check, maybe. Or knight a4. Oh, no, but he has to worry about queen to g1 check, picking up his rook, so he probably... So now he's to, the, he has to worry about queen to g1 check. Right now he has two pieces for my rook and pawn. Um, if he plays bishop a4 check, I can play b5. So I wonder how he uh, I wonder how he meets that because he can't castle. All right, queen to g3. Well, I can just take now, can't I? Sure, let's take this. So I'm gonna play bishop. D7, King E7. That's my concept here. So the I don't know the weakest square is probably D6 for me. So Let's see how do I how do I deal with that actually? D6 square. I can play B5 discourage any knight. Uh, we're a little short on time here. Um, b5 might play bishop b6. Play. See, I need, I'm, when he moves his rook, ugh, I'm concerned about the d6 pawn here. I might just have to give it up. Maybe bishop c6. So that he plays bishop e6 and can play king d7. I don't know. This this position, I know, I've, uh, the pawn on d6 is a big defect here for me. If I can play rook d8 and rook d7, or castles and rook d7, that takes care of the, the d pawn weakness. I really want, you know, get the rook to the h file and of course, I need to worry about my g, g pawn. Um, see, now I, have to, I play king d7 because I can't allow him to come. Uh, I don't want to let him come uh, bishop c7 attacking the pawn, so I play king d7. Now the rooks are connected. So I might consider like playing the rook to h8 next move. My king is in a precarious position, but can he break through? E5, I just push to D5. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was kind of obvious. Um, so I'm gonna lose the D6 pawn. Push to D5. Ah. Oh well, I lost the pawn. So, if he takes with bishop, I just play king c8. If he takes with rook, I think I can play uh, king uh, c7. Hmm. 
my only my consolation is uh, my pawns are healthier than his. I'm gonna have two islands. He has three islands. So I've got to think about ways to limit the pieces. The knight on c3 and bishop on b3. So his uh, his main challenge is the uh, you know figuring out how to take this pawn. So I think I just drop back to c uh, back to c8 here. Right, and then he pushes to e5. That makes sense. Of course, now I can get my rook to the open file. My bishop on c6 limits his knight on c3. Also, his bishop is now kind of restricted on uh, d6. If he plays, uh, oh, I need to worry about potential tactic here. If he plays um, rook to f1, I cannot play rook d7. Because then he just plays rook takes f7 check, rook takes f7, and bishop takes e6, forking the uh, king and rook. So if he plays, uh, if he plays rook to f1, I can't play f6 either, you know, because then my pawn's just hanging. So I think... I think this is forced. Bishop to e8, protecting the f pawn, and now he just he can play knight e4. Yes, this was an obvious move. Um, he wants to come to g5. See, do I get my rook to the seventh rank, or do I want to put my rook on h5? Maybe I just attack and try and tie him down to No, I, I gotta try putting the rook on uh, seventh rank. Maybe something good will happen. He's gonna come knight g5 probably. And try and try and clean up the uh, try and clean up the F pawn. Oh, he plays knight g5. I intend to play. Uh, I intend to play rook g2. Try and try and pick off his g pawn. A key concern in all positions is uh, the bishop. If he if he gets rid of this pawn, the bishop can take on e6, and then I really don't know if we're good to go with my king. So maybe I can just, if I have time, toss in e5. Or rather, b6 is better, because b5 gives him knight c5. So here, I think I want to play rook g2. Yeah. I don't think I have anything better. So if he takes, I have to take this. Now, do I want to throw in that check to get his king to uh, d2? Oh, wait, I have a much more serious problem here because he is going to play uh, bishop takes e6. He's also threatening rook the c7 check. Okay, th this is this is forced. Hmm, I will probably lose this game. Let's see, why why did I lose this game? I think 
uh, it was just that one weakness, the one weakness on d6 after the queens traded. That was what brought me down in the position. So. My opponent understood that, which is why he allowed me to trade the queens. Clearly, I could not play king b8, which... All right. What can I do anything here? Um, he's threatening rook b8 check, which will force me to play king d7, and then he plays bishop a4 check, winning. Actually, that's, that's checkmate, isn't it? Bishop h4, bishop a4. Oh, well, I have no answer to that, so I'll resign. <laughs> Ugh, down to 1840 in 15 minutes. That's probably what I deserve anyway. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for watching. This has been, uh, I think, what do we call this live standard? And have a nice day.